Coming up on Eagle Vision News, which popular fast food chain is making people sick? And we'll tell you who says the smoking age should be 21. Also, $100 million. Is it enough to fight homelessness in LA? All this and more on Eagle Vision News. Welcome to Eagle Vision News, I'm Carrie Casey. And I'm Clark Finney, our top story tonight. Over 22 cases of E. coli bacteria infections have been traced back to Chipotle. About one third of the victims have been hospitalized after the outbreak in both Oregon and Washington chains. No deaths have been immediately reported. According to a statement from Oregon Health Public Division, the source of the E. coli could very likely be from produce coming in contact with Chipotle meat products. Many of those who got sick had eaten some type of vegetable meal. The chain stock was already down 6.5% for the year, but after the outbreak, it dropped another 2.5%. So far, 43 restaurants in the affected areas have been temporarily closed until further notice. The man who attacked an Uber driver in Costa Mesa last Friday has been fired from his job. 32-year-old Benjamin Golden is facing four misdemeanor counts, including assault and battery. The vicious attack was caught on the dash cam after the driver asked intoxicated Golden to leave the car. Take a look at this disturbing footage of him repeatedly hitting his driver in the head. After the attack, Golden was arrested for public intoxication and assault, and then later released. The video of the attack went viral, and by Monday, Taco Bell released a statement that said Golden was terminated from his position as a mid-level brand manager. And over the weekend, nearly 500 people were arrested at Halloween music festivals in Pomona and San Bernardino. The charges for many of the young rave attendees involved drug or fake ID possession and public intoxication. In Pomona, the music festival saw over 20,000 concert goers and over 40,000 in San Bernardino. Thankfully, the festivals did not see any major incidents or injuries, and according to LAPD, most of the arrests were conducted without issue. Biola alumni Zach King created a lyric video that went viral and attracted the attention of Justin Bieber himself. The editing guru known as Final Cut King created a video for Justin's new single titled, Sorry. The lyric video also features former Biola student Aaron Benitez as co-producer. After gaining a mass amount of popularity, it's now being featured on Justin Bieber's Vivo as the official lyric video to the eighth track on his upcoming album, Purpose. The pop star tweeted a link to the video on his official Twitter last Thursday, and since then, the video has racked up over 7 million views. And no, Snapchat is not going to have access to your private photos. Last week, Snapchat updated their terms of service, and many users became concerned about their privacy on the app. The new update states that Snapchat has the perpetual license and right to use your name, likeness, and voice in any and all media distribution channels. In other words, any content you create, upload, post, or appear in belongs to them. Snapchat reps took to their blog and claimed that they continuously delete private messages from their servers as soon as they're read. Therefore, they cannot and do not share them with any advertisers or business partners. Fresh and Easy's Southern California days are numbered after the grocery store chain filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. This is the store's second bankruptcy filing in two years. At least 69 markets have closed this year alone, including seven in Orange County. Nearly 100 stores are marking down products up to 30 and 40 percent off. The company says it has between $100 million and $500 million in liabilities and less than $50 million in assets. Gas prices are dropping around Los Angeles, and reporter Tori Andreas tells us how low it's going. Gasoline prices are continuing to drop across the nation. The average price per gallon in California has gone down from 382 to 286 in just two months. Some cities like La Mirada are even seeing prices as low as the mid $2 range. Gas prices around La Mirada are the lowest that they've been in quite some time and are expected to continue dropping through December. Energy experts say fuel will likely stay cheap for at least the next two months. It's a noticeable difference, especially because before, like a few weeks back, remember, you know, the cheapest would be like $3 at a time. Now it's about like $3, $2.30, usually, so it's a really big difference. The lower prices could end up pumping more than $100 billion into the American economy over the course of the next year. 
Well, I noticed that the gas prices went down this week when I filled up my car, and that was a really nice surprise because with my extra money, I'm like buying groceries as a student. So it was really nice to have, you know, that extra cash, that extra little bit. You know, a little bit on gas goes a long way. So I'm really excited that they're supposed to be decreasing for the rest of December. The decrease in gas prices means more people will be driving, which in turn creates more greenhouse gas emissions. But on the plus side, you'll be seeing some extra money in your wallet for holiday shopping this season. This has been Tori Andreas, Eagle Vision News. And Brooke Carlucci joins us for an update in health news. Brooke, the issue of raising the smoking age is a huge hot button topic. Uh, what do physicians have to say about it? Well, recently, the American Academy of Pediatrics came out with a strong new policy statement that urges policymakers to raise the minimum age people could buy nicotine products to 21. This includes both cigarettes and e-cigarettes, a.k.a. vapes. The health benefits of barring people under age 21 from buying these products could be tremendous, including 4.2 million fewer years of lost life among the next generation of American adults, according to a report released in March by the Institute of Medicine. In Pennsylvania, a hospital said that it is telling people about 1,300 open-heart surgery patients they could have been exposed to a bacterial infection after identifying eight patients who contracted the disease. Four of those patients have died. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention stopped short of directly linking the deaths to the infection, as all four of the patients had underlying medical conditions. But the hospital acknowledged that the infection probably was a contributing factor. Research early this year suggests we can actually become addicted to food. There have been reports of people losing control over how much they eat and experiencing withdrawal when they are cut off, just like drug and alcohol addiction. Among these foods that are most addictive, according to a study, include pizza, chocolate, chips, cookies, ice cream, french fries, cake, and soda. All considered processed foods. Fruits and vegetables were unfortunately at the bottom of the list. Thank you for joining us, Brooke. Looks like I'm going to have to stock up on some fruits and veggies next time I go grocery shopping. Definitely. <laughs> well, now you can work up a sweat and train like a fighter right here in La Mirada. Reporter Josh Clausen takes us to the newest UFC gym. The UFC is the largest mixed martial arts promotion company in the world, featuring several of the top-ranked fighters in the sport. And now you can train like one of these fighters, because the fast-growing UFC gym franchise is opening up a brand new location right here in La Mirada. The gym offers a variety of mixed martial arts and functional fitness classes, in addition to being equipped with state-of-the-art mixed martial arts training equipment. The building is located at 15078 Rosecrans Avenue. It is 46,000 square feet, making it the largest UFC gym location to date. The gym is closed to the public until the interior construction is completely finished, but people looking to get signed up right away can stop by the enrollment center to get pre-enrolled for a gym membership. Everything you need all under one roof. It's a multi-discipline facility, so we operate with a trained different concept. You can get elite coaching, come and be a part of a fitness community, and then ultimately take any one of our classes. In just a few short months, this whole building will be converted into a full-fledged UFC training facility for all ages. The gym is set to open in late December or early January. This is Josh Clausen with Eagle Vision News. Jennifer Jensen has the scoop on the world of entertainment for us tonight. So, Jennifer, my cousin loves One Direction. As do I. Yeah. Well, <laughs> please tell me they're still going strong. Well, after five years of constant touring, One Direction is taking a break from the stage. 80 shows in 20 countries later, their On the Road Again tour came to an end in Sheffield, United Kingdom. After their last show, the beloved boy band agreed to take a much-needed break, and many speculated that this would be the last time fans would see 1D on the stage together. However, the day before their final concert, Niall sent a tweet saying, Don't believe anything you're reading. We stand strong as a band, and we're brothers. Can't wait for you to hear what we've been working on. The next step for the band is their highly anticipated fifth album called Made in the AM, which is set to be released on November 13th. The Hunger Games stars left their mark on Hollywood this weekend. 
Jennifer Lawrence, Liam Hemsworth, and Josh Hutcherson cemented themselves in Hollywood history. The trio placed their prints and signatures into cement at a handprint ceremony at the legendary TCL Chinese Theater Saturday morning. The trio is set to promote the fourth and final installment of the film franchise. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2 will be in theaters November 20th. After three years of radio silence, Adele is back and breaking records. A successful comeback was expected for the British singer-songwriter, but the reception of her new song called Hello has been more than anyone could have imagined. The track's official music video set a record high, topping over 100 million views on YouTube in the first five days of its release. Billboard also revealed that Hello is looking to debut at number one on its Hot 100 list this week. Okay, so you heard that song, right? Oh my gosh, yes. I did it. It's everywhere. It's it was literally so been good. stuck in my head all week. I love it. Thanks so much for joining us, <laughs> Absolutely. Jen. Well, affordable housing for LA's homeless could soon be a reality. Reporter Kara Ramey takes us to Skid Row to see just how far $100 million can go. Currently, an estimated 254,000 men, women, and children live without a home in Los Angeles County. Homelessness in L.A. has risen dramatically the past few years, and the tents and cardboard homes continue to line the street. On October 27th, the Board of Los Angeles County Supervisors set a budget of $100 million for affordable housing to help with the growing homeless issue. However, some negative effects are now beginning to arise for the neighboring communities and businesses. Sometimes, I mean, really, I think in the where the large populations are, maybe people don't want to go there anymore or they want to avoid it. And so the businesses in the area might suffer um, because maybe people feel uncomfortable about being around that many homeless people. The L.A. officials enforced the bill to minimize the dramatic growth to L.A.'s homeless population. Yet some people question whether or not the budget will help solve or even decrease the issue. Here they, they find this area more of a safe haven in a way. Because if they go down two, three blocks more Skid Row area, they get jumped more, they get beat more. So you get a couple of them, more females, that will come out here and sleep. Jay Handel, chairman of the West L.A. Sawtell Neighborhood Council, says it's going to take a whole lot more than $100 million spent wisely to fix the problem we've created for 40 years. But this is a good start. Having a home and something to look forward to and something to go to it will probably help a lot, especially just in the way of you have to have a job and you have to take care of yourself. When you look on the street, you can't really do that. This is Kara Ramey reporting with Eagle Vision News. So the Biola Bookstore now sells makeup. I was in there buying my graduation sash, mm -hmm. and I just took a little peruse of the selection, and I thought it was really interesting that they sell makeup now. Yeah, I actually got a chance to take photos. If you take a look, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a trend in them. Um, the colors are on the lighter end of the spectrum, but there Ooh, aren't yeah. any darker ones. Yeah, so um, I could find my color. I mean, this is a different kind of foundation, but they had one that was similar to vanilla. Vanilla. Right, and they didn't have any chocolate ones, and I was a little upset. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of speaks to the demographic here, though, and what audience they're trying to market to with their products. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I could, that definitely says something. I think it says something, too. So, yeah. we'll have to keep an eye on that. Maybe they were slacking up the store because of that, uh, that low faculty female drop that we had recently, and they're trying Maybe. to reel us back in. <laughs> So uh, it rained yesterday and today, and I'm curious to know if fall weather is finally here or if California is playing another trick on us. Josh, what does the weather look like this week? Thank you, Clark and Carrie. I should have stopped at the Biola bookstore before this. I'm feeling a little slick, if you know what I mean. Behind me is the Griffith Observatory. I've seen a Manilow concert very close to here. Good stuff. He writes the songs that make the whole world sing. You see the clouds in the air. Can't really tell if they're clouds or pollution in Los Angeles, but these are definitely clouds. Fun fact, Rebel Without a Cause, a James Dean film, was filmed right here on this balcony. Pretty interesting stuff. Let's go on to the current conditions. Today... It was very cool in the morning. Low 50s, got a little warmer in the afternoon, and then cooled right back down again in the evening. Still, the entire day was cooler than we've had in quite some time. Let's go on to the national temperatures. Basically, all you have to know about the national temperatures is that everything is a lot cooler than it was last week. Cool patch up here in the west. Uh, we're all enjoying that. 
We know I am. Let's go on to the seven day forecast. 70s all around. Haven't had that in a long time. We're going to be wearing fur in Los Angeles. I'll be pulling up my fur real soon. Back to you, Clark and Carrie in the studio. Well, that's all we have for you this week, but join us next week for a spotlight on men's basketball. And how do LA drivers compare to the rest of the country? Plus, we'll have a look into wacky news all around the world. Make sure you keep up with us during the week. Like us on Facebook and follow us at BioLEV on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We'll see you next week.